Flutter Forward has set the direction of Flutter and Dart for the next couple of years. There are over 5 million Flutter developers and 700,000 published apps built with Flutter. PUBG Mobile and Google Classroom have even integrated Flutter into their own applications. This release was jam-packed with a bunch of awesome announcements and improvements since the last Flutter event, so let's get right into it. Flutter 3.7 is available now, and you can upgrade with Flutter Upgrade. We're now able to add custom context menus anywhere in our apps, whether that's a text selection toolbar or a widget. Text selection has been improved within scrolling context, and we have a magnifying glass that appears when we select text on iOS and Android. Also, a bunch of improvements have been made to iOS and macOS. The Cupertino List section and Cupertino List Tile widgets were added. We can now add menu bars and cascading menus. Platform view backgrounds are blurrable. And great news, the animation jank issue on iOS devices has been reduced. More widgets have been migrated to Material 3. To enable Material 3 in your app, go into your Material Apps theme data and set Use Material 3 to True. To start designing your apps with Material 3 color schemes and components, check out the Flex Color Scheme package. It comes with over 50 pre-built themes that you can easily customize, and there's a Playground web app for you to test it out and ensure everything is to your liking. I love how you're able to customize widgets and copy the theme code directly into your app. Be sure to check out the documentation for tutorials. Custom Fragment Shader support is insane now. You can add sick effects to your apps and even build games. Just look at all the cool stuff people built. Now go learn how to build awesome effects with shaders too. Next let's look at the future of Dart, Flutter for Web, and Flutter for Mobile. Dart 2.19 has been released, but let's talk about Dart 3. Dart 3 is a major release slated for mid-2023, but you can try out Dart 3A, the alpha version right now. Dart 3 will support pattern matching, which has been a highly requested feature for years. Sometimes you may want your function to return multiple values and types. Before Dart 3, you'd normally return values in a list, tuple, or a class. A new built-in collection type called record solves this by allowing us to return multiple values of different types from a function. We can even destructure these values too. If we don't need a value, we can discard it by adding an underscore. We'll also be able to use patterns for matching on the type and individual fields of each type. This is useful in scenarios like this where we have a hierarchy of classes. You can try out both these features in the development channel. There are more features in the pipeline for Dart 3, so be sure to check out the Dart 3A release notes for more info. Let's take a look at what's on the horizon for Flutter Web. Flutter Web is not another general purpose DOM-based web framework. There's a ton of those already. Flutter Web is great for building graphic-rich experiences with interactive content. Here's an example of element embedding, where we render Flutter in a div and can access and manipulate the state of the app in both JavaScript and Flutter. We can apply CSS to the div and still interact with the Flutter app in real time. For Flutter Mobile, we'll be able to add 3D models in the future. Using the scene widget and .glb files, we can render and hot reload our 3D models. Scene also supports animations by adding the animation name to the animations argument. I'm very excited about the future of Flutter and Dart. It's been amazing seeing how much progress has been made over the past few years. Go show some love to all the teams, contributors, and community members that made this release possible. I can't wait to see what's next. There are even more updates that I didn't get a chance to cover in this video, so be sure to check out my blog post on launchclub.io. And with that, I'll see you in the next one.